Now this, what I'm about to tell you, is a part of the first chapter. It's not the entire first chapter. The first project is Creature Commandos. Record scratch, get the fuck out of here. Hey, it's Adam Griffin, you're here at Film Critic, and you're watching the Armchair Auteur. This is an ongoing video series I do where we talk about new movies, old movies, uh, screenplay analysis, television series reviews, that sort of thing. So if you like movies, and you like movie adjacent popular culture, and you like to see somebody pick those things apart, you're in the right place and you should consider subscribing. We're going to talk about uh, the new DC film slate that just got announced. I was in the middle of working on something that's a little bit more involved uh, that I'm probably going to work on this weekend. Uh, it's a topic that I want to make sure I do like real justice to. Uh, but while I was kind of working on that, and also uh, sorting some laundry, this is why I'm on the couch for the first time in a video since like, I don't know, like 2019. Uh, they, they, James Gunn uh, came out and announced the, the future of the DC film slate. Uh, if you're not familiar, James Gunn, the director of all the Guardians of the Galaxy movies and a bunch of other films, uh, was hired alongside co-producer Peter Safran to be the co-CEOs of DC Films going forward. David Zaslov, uh, the guy who runs Warner Bros. Discovery, wanted to you know, fix the DC problem that everyone constantly is talking, complaining about, the fact that the MCU was this large and and like perfectly calibrated thing that everybody loves, and the DC films are kind of all over the place and a mess. Uh, so they brought in James Gunn and Safran, who worked together on the Peacemaker show that was very successful on HBO Max, and also the Suicide Squad movie that was fairly successful, I guess, kind of, I don't know. It was decent. And they're essentially going to overhaul everything. So James Gunn has been on Twitter I don't know, like every day ever since getting the job, uh, talking to people and teasing stuff and whatever. And they said their first salvo of what would be their 8 to 10 year plan was going to get announced in January. Today is the last day in January. They announced it at noon. So I'm going to talk about all of the 10 projects that got announced, and I'll go through each one and say like you know what what they what it is like when it's supposed to come out, uh, who I think they'll like get for it, and who I think they should get for it, or whether or not I think it's going to be successful, that type of stuff. Uh, but then also later on, we're going to talk about James Gunn himself and like what I think of this direction and what I think of of the plans like on a larger scale. So first of all, uh, we discovered definitively that certain projects are just not going to be folded in or a part of this larger plan. And they're gonna have specific Elseworlds branding. That would be Matt Reeves' Batverse stuff, uh, anything involving uh, Todd Phillips' Jokerverse, so Joker Folly Ado, uh, the Batman uh, Part Two. we got an official release date for that, which is October 3rd, 2025. Uh, and then anything like Teen Titans Go related. Those things are going to continue existing, uh, but they're going to be labeled as DC Elseworlds, which if you're a fan, you know that uh, DC Elseworlds was like DC's equivalent to Marvel's What If, where like you could put out a book about, you know, what if Batman fought Jack the Ripper or whatever, you put a little Elseworlds sticker on it and then you could sell that as a comic and no one would be confused as to why Bruce Wayne is in Victorian London, you know, that sort of thing. So I think it's actually pretty smart and they reiterated that the next four movies that are coming out from the DC, you are going to like kind of like fade into this new world. We're still going to get Shazam Fear of the Gods next month. You know, uh, anti-vax comments from Zachary Love, I'd be damned. Right after that, we're going to get The Flash, uh, criminal acts from Ezra Miller, be damned, uh, because that's the movie that they're going to use to reset everything. So like they have to finish it and release it. And apparently they all think it's good. So we'll see. And then after that, there's going to be Blue Beetle, which is going to be the movie that's probably the closest to being like the actual tone of where things are going to go forward. And then after that, we got Aquaman 2, Aquaman, the Lost Kingdom or whatever. Uh, which implies that that will somehow be a part of this new continuity. I don't know how they're going to re-edit it to make that work, but whatever, that, that's the deal. They also definitively said that essentially Gal Gadot, Ezra Miller, uh, Jason Momoa, and Zachary Levy, like these people who are in movies, could, could continue playing those roles into the future. Like there's nothing precluding that from happening. Uh, they're including Ezra in that, which is insane to me, but I guess they're getting some kind of like help or rehabilitation. I don't know how they have like rehab for like kidnapping people, but whatever. Uh, that seems to be the direction they're going to go. Like, they might keep them around. And they phrased it in the way that's like, they'll keep them around depending on what people think and how it goes with those movies financially. Uh, but that Henry Cavill is 100% out, and that he wasn't fired as being Superman, that he was never recast in the first place, and it's more the previous regime's fault that this is a mess and not theirs. Fair, I suppose, whatever. So the first chapter of this new 8-10 to 10 year plan is called Gods and Monsters. And they announced 10 projects that are all connected to it in some way, but that is not the entire... Uh, part of chapter one. There's more, more movies and television projects that are going to be a part of this phase, so to speak, but these are the ones that are announced so far, and they're not announced with any 
talent <laughs> attached except for a couple or casting or directors or any of that stuff. They say they're all either in the process of doing those things or close to those things. So this is very preliminary. First is an animated series called Creature Commandos. It's probably going to be on HBO Max. Uh, I don't know. I don't have anything to say about Creature Commandos beyond the fact that it's 100% the type of thing I figured James Gunn would, would lead with uh, because he's into like that type of DCU stuff, like the kind of off the beaten path stuff. I'm surprised we can get like a Black Hawk show. Uh, but yeah, Creature Commandos is going to be an animated series, and going forward, these animated series are going to have the same voice casting as the actors playing these characters when they show up in live action films. So in the event that the cast of the Creature Commandos crosses over in some way in one of the other movies, it'll be the people that voice them on the cartoon, uh, which is different than how Marvel does things. And I guess smart if they're trying to make everything like one big thing. Uh, Creature Commandos will probably be like fun or whatever. It might be entertaining. I don't know. It does not seem to me like something that I'm personally interested in, but I like that they're doing off the beaten path stuff. I always support that. Then another HBO Max series is going to be Waller, which is going to spin off from the Peacemaker series, and Viola Davis will continue playing Amanda Waller. She's been doing good so far. No real reason to recast, I suppose. And uh, that show's going to be run by uh, Crystal Henry, who used to write for Watchmen, the show, and then Jeremy Carver, who used to work on uh, Doom Patrol, the show. Those two people happen to be part of the writer's room that James Gunn put together for all this stuff. That also includes Christina Hodson, who worked on Birds of Prey, and also the Cancel Batgirl movie. And then I think Tom King was also there in the group. And Drew Goddard, who was, to me, the most surprising name. And I feel like if Drew was involved, he's definitely going to be writing and directing one of the bigger projects. Like, I don't know why he would not. But the first real movie on this Chapter 1 slate, the beginning of James Gunn's new DC Universe, is going to be a movie called Superman Legacy, which is set to come out July 11, 2025. And it's the movie James Gunn is currently writing that's about a young Superman. It's not going to be an origin story, but it's going to be about a young Superman, I guess, coming to terms with his Kryptonian heritage and his Earthbound heritage. It's James Gunn making a Superman movie. Saffron implied that he's trying to convince James to direct it. I don't really want a James Gunn written Superman movie, but I certainly don't want a James Gunn directed Superman movie. But if that's how this whole thing's going to start, I guess that's how this whole thing's going to start. In terms of casting, they're probably going to go with the younger actor. It sounds like they're going to go with younger actors for a lot of these parts, with the idea of them being in these roles for, you know, 10, 15 years or something. So I guess it's smart from a business perspective. I think they're going to get to play Superman. I mean, I keep seeing people fan casting David Cornsweet, who's like the hot guy who played the shitty projectionist in Pearl. Um, maybe he could be Superman. That could be cool, I guess. I've seen some pictures where people like Photoshop. It looks neat, I suppose. Uh, but whoever they get, I, I kind of hope they get like an unknown or something because it's, it's Superman. It's easier to play that part if people know who you are. And I don't know. I'm very... This is the one that I'm like the least excited for just because I love Superman. I love the fact they're going to make Superman a front and center part of the DC Universe. He's like one of my favorite characters in all of fiction. But I, I, I just don't want James doing it. Or if he like writes it and they bring in someone else to direct it and that person does some rewrites, that would be cool. They also explained that the J.J. Abrams produced Superman movie, the black Superman movie that Ta-Nehisi Coates is writing, uh, is still in development. And that's just, if it get, if it goes forward, it'll just be part of the Elseworlds brand alongside the Batman, alongside Joker, alongside Teen Titans Go. I think it has the potential to be big if done right, but I also think that people are still going to have such a sour taste in their mouth over Henry Cavill and the Snyderverse going away that the movie's gonna have to be really good to not get review bombed by bots. And the next thing they're gonna do, all these other release dates are tentative, this is just the order they hope they go in. The next thing they're gonna do is a show called Lanterns, which is gonna pick up from the Greg Berlanti produced Green Lantern series that has been in development at HBO Max for a bit now. They shot like multiple versions of the pilot, now it's just dead, I guess. That was gonna be this like genre hopping story of different pairs of Green Lanterns and treating them like cops. It was gonna have like Alan Scott in like the 50s, I think, and then like, I was going to follow like, Guy Gardner in the 80s and like John Stewart in the present day or something. There was a whole thing they were, they were trying to go for. It's just not happening now. But they're taking the kernel of the idea of sticking with treating Green Lanterns like cops because they're just space cops. And they're going to do a show where it's going to be Hal Jordan and John Stewart as like a you know a duo of buddy cops uh, solving a mystery at the heart of the DC Universe. Uh, they called it like True Detective in Space. So that could be cool uh, depending on who they get to write and direct it or produce it or whatever. But also, uh, I think like Tremonte Rhodes or someone to play John Stewart. That could be a really cool big come up. I don't actually really care who they cast as Hal. Just get a white guy who's a dick, I suppose. It's like not that hard. Uh, it could be good. I, I happen to like the Green Lanterns, and I happen to like them going in a cool direction and not just what I assume they would do, which is just rehash all the Jeff Johns Rainbow War stuff from like the last 20 years or whatever. Um, so this, is, this could be cool. 
Could be, I'm not sure yet. Then uh, a show called Paradise Lost that's supposed to be a, a Game of Thrones style political intrigue drama uh, that's a prequel to Wonder Woman and it's about the history of Themyscira and like what it's like running uh, a society full of all women, which the way they phrased it in the pitch made it sound like really weird like they're like you know what, what would it be like to have a society run by women but they didn't say it in like a aspirational like progressive kind of way it it really sounded like they meant oh these women are always gonna be sniping at each other and being like bitches <laughs> so i was kind of like uh weird weird choice to do for something if you want to expand the wonder woman mythology but again we'll see who they get to do it we'll see what it's really about we'll see who the central characters are going to be I don't know. Brave and the Bold is one of the next movies they're going to be doing. Brave and the Bold is basically a new Batman movie about Batman and Robin, but it's about Batman and his son, Damian Wayne, being Robin. It's the first time we're going to get Damian Wayne on the big screen. Damian has existed as a character for nearly 20 years now. Uh, so it's not like Damian's like this brand new mythology piece. Like it's He's pretty entrenched now, so I think it's pretty cool they're going to go in that direction on screen. But it also means we're going to get a new Batman who is not... Uh, Robert Pattinson, and then, I don't know, they'll, they'll cast some, like, mean-looking, like, 12-year-old or whatever to play Damien. Maybe they can get the kid from Euphoria or something, I don't know, or whatever, but uh, for Batman, it's going to be really difficult to cast a new Batman that's going to have to exist alongside Robert Pattinson, because, like, Pattinson came in, and he wasn't really living alongside Ben Affleck Batman. Ben Affleck Batman was on borrowed time. Uh, this would be like if Wild and Nolan movies were out and popular, there was also a Batman movie that was different stylistically in tone. And I think it's going to be an interesting thing to do. Like, I love Batman, so they could have seven Batmans all existing at the same time, and I wouldn't give a shit. That'd be fine by me. I love Batman. But I wonder how the general public's going to take it. You have the problem of, like, wondering whether or not that Batman is going to be as good as Pattinson's Batman. And they unlikely, they likely won't be. They'll have to be different, but I don't know if they're going to be as interesting or if they're going to capture the zeitgeist the way that Pattinson Batman has. In terms of who I think they should cast, I mean, I think if you're going to run with Batman, the father and son route of, with Robin, you can probably go a little bit older uh, than you do with the other younger cast characters. But I don't think you should go too much older because I don't really want a DC universe where like Superman's like 22 and Batman's old because uh, they kind of already did something similar to that with the Snyderverse where Batman was older and more experienced and Superman was new. I think it would be cooler if they were peers in some way. And they can be peers and then still have... Batman being a dad, you know, he, he became a father through some pretty unscrupulous means, so it's not like he sat down to plan a family. Uh, and they also say that, that it's going to be a movie that actually deals with the Bat family concept and it has all the other characters, so I imagine it won't be a movie that, like, makes Damien the first Robin or something. Like, it's going to be a movie where there's already been, like, several Robins, which means they can cast Dick Grayson and Tim Drake and all these other characters and stuff. I think it's going to be kind of cool because that's the version of Batman we've never gotten in live action. And I think that, in general, people shy away from Robin on the big screen because they think it's weird and, like, how do you have a child walking around with this grim, dark guy? But if your Robin is Damien, who was raised by the League of Assassins and is basically, like, Stewie but with, like, swords then that's not so hard to, to, for the general public to swallow. I have a personal casting for who I would love to see be a Batman that is not Robert Pattinson uh, that I was going to say in this video, but it's actually very near and dear to me and I'm not going to share it with anybody. One, because I don't think they're going to go that route. And two, I don't know, sometimes I'm comforted by the fact that someday I'm going to make a Batman movie and I'm going to get him to do it. So keeping that to myself. However, I don't know who they get for this, man. I mean, uh, it's you, you're essentially going to have to cast, and the entire casting process is going to be this person has to, to be Batman in a different way than Robert Pattinson is being Batman. And Robert Pattinson happens to be being Batman in a very cool and interesting way. So good luck to them, actually. I thought I'd have like a, like a fun, cool idea for casting, but I really don't. I think it's just going to be hard, very difficult. And I sort of hope that this is the project that Drew Goddard is doing and working on, honestly. I think it, it would be cool to see him do a Batman movie. Uh, I like Drew a lot, and uh, I'd like to see him get his, uh, a chance at one of these projects. They also announced an authority movie. If you're not familiar with the authority, uh, they're not actually like a really, a, a historically anyway, a DC proper uh, team. They're from Wildstorm. Wildstorm is a separate universe that Jim Lee created with a, several other writers, by the way. Jim Lee didn't create all these characters, but he created a lot of the, the basis for it with Wildcats and stuff like that. And over the years, Wildstorm was this separate entity that ended up being owned by DC because Jim Lee sold them to DC. That's how Jim Lee became like so important to the DC power structure was this, in, uh, this initial sale. And 
the Wildstorm universe is really dope. There's a lot of really fantastic comics in Wildstorm. They've had a lot of big writers working in that space. Ed Brubaker, Alan Moore, Warren Ellis, lots of lots of very uh, Joe Casey, lots of very talented people. And the Authority is sort of like one of the most successful teams from that universe. The Authority is a group of superheroes within the Wildstorm universe who just decide that they're not going to do typical superhero stuff. They're going to fight the real bastards of the world. So they fight, like, governments and stuff like that. Um, and with the right creators, an authority movie in modern times could be really cool uh, because so many, movies, so many people watch superhero movies and they ask themselves, like, well, why don't superheroes fight, like, in, like real injustice? And the authority is about that idea, but it also deals with the ideas about fascism. It deals with the ideas that the fact that these characters sort of appoint themselves as being like the leaders of the world is bad and there's there's a nuance in there there's there's a lot of interesting stuff but it's definitely like a very r-rated concept it's very violent it's very hyper violent um and i don't know how it's going to do with existing i mean they've done authority stories that exist in the dc universe because dc kind of subsumed all the wildstorm characters the way they at one point subsumed like the faucet characters and that's how you get shazam and stuff but to me the authority makes more sense in a world where the authority are like the actual biggest superheroes it's weird to have them in a world where superman exists uh there's there's stories that do that and one of one of the most famous ones is like action comic 775 what's so funny about truth justice the american way which is a one shot written by joe kelly drawn by doug monkey and it's about superman fighting a team called the elite that are very basically the authority, but with the serial numbers filed off, and it's like a fantastic Superman story. So I don't know if their plan is to do the authority as a movie and then have them fight Superman later or something and him rehabilitate them or whatever, but I don't know who you get to do this. I mean, I don't know what, what line of the team they're going to go with, but getting to see <laughs> Apollo and Midnighter, who are basically like a gay Superman and Batman, on the big screen, getting somebody cool to play Jenny Sparks, it's like a really great character for like, you know, a young British actress. Uh, there's, it's like a diverse team, it's an interesting team, there's a lot they could do with it, but it very much depends on who they get to make the movie, to write it and direct it. I don't even know who you would get who would be interesting within the sphere of who DC would want. I feel this is the sort of thing that you maybe get Matthew Vaughn to do, like I feel like he loves working on Mark Miller projects, and some of the biggest authority comics came from Mark, Mark Miller, and he has a really good job, I think, of doing that kind of ultra-violent, you know, graphic image comic shit on, on screen, like in The Kingsman. I feel like he could kind of do it. Um, I don't know who's going to do it, but that that's who I see doing it. I hope James doesn't do it himself, because that would be that would drive me insane. But they also announced Booster Gold. Uh, I think it's going to be as a TV series. Uh, with yeah, Booster Gold's a character who's a time traveler, like a loser in the future, and he comes back and pretends to be a superhero. Um, it could be a really fun character to do. I think I would love a Booster Gold series where he's a part of something bigger, either teaming up with Blue Beetle in some way or on a team. Booster Gold on his own, I don't have a whole lot of interest in watching. Um, all I know is that my absolute favorite fan casting for this character is uh, Mike the Miz Mizanin, the wrestler uh, for Booster Gold. I don't know if that's who they're going to get, but I hope that's who they get. I think it'd be really cool. Uh, they already got John Cena who worked in the universe. Why not? I think Booster Gold, depending on who's involved in actually creating it, could be pretty popular because the Peacemaker works because he's not a very popular character and there's a really fun central performance and it's like very irreverent. I feel like Booster Gold would be very similar, but with time travel thrown in, so it could do really well. I won't care that much about it, because I'm not a big booster mark like that, but it could be neat. Then they also announced Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, which is going to be heavily based on Tom King's Supergirl of, of Tomorrow comic that he did. Uh, it really just deals with the fact that Supergirl and Superman are very different. Superman came to Earth as a baby, so he thinks of himself as like being a human, essentially, not a Kryptonian, whereas Kara Zor-El came to Earth when she was like 15, so she lived the whole life, essentially, on Krypton, and now she's in America. Um, they, they have very different perspectives on having powers and living amongst people. So it's supposed to be like a big sci-fi epic with her out doing stuff in space. I, it's one of the few Tom King comics I haven't read. It looked neat, but I haven't. I never got around to reading it. I certainly didn't think it was going to turn into a movie anytime soon, so I didn't think there was a sense of urgency. Uh, but the fact that they have Tom King working on it, too, is a good sign, I think. I, I, I'll talk a little more about that later, but this could be neat. I, I, I like Supergirl. I like... Superman adjacent comics like Tom King this could, this could be good I don't know if they're just going to keep the Supergirl who shows up in the Flash because I think that that performance is like I think that's like a like a like a alternate real like a multiversal character so I don't know if she's going to stick around and play Supergirl here or if they're going to recast but it'll be interesting to see and then finally uh, Swamp Thing is not the end of chapter one but like they say that it's going to be sort of a standalone story about Swamp Thing that is tethered to the larger overarching theme of the new DC slate I don't really have a lot of interest in watching a, a new Swamp Thing movie, <laughs> to be entirely honest. I never even got around to that show they kept for, like, very briefly. But, I don't know, if you get some, like, horror guys on this, it could be really cool. I don't know if James Wan is going to, like, stick around 
with uh, the DC universe after Aquaman, but like that would be rad thing for him to do, or him to at least produce even. He he wouldn't have to write or direct. I mean, uh, you know, maybe maybe they get a Kayla Cooper in here uh, from Malignant and Megan. You know, this could be really good for her. I don't know, but uh, I don't care. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't care about Swamp Thing like that. The only person I'd like to see do Swamp Thing is like Guillermo del Toro. But even then, I just I don't I'm not a big Swamp Thing person. So good that they're having a diverse slate, but I don't I don't care. I don't I, I don't know if it's gonna be successful or not. Again, very dependent on who they get. So that's how I feel about all the projects that get announced. But I, the way I feel about James Gunn overall as like the face of this, I think it's good that he came out and said things are going to be very writer centric. That they're going to be only putting movies into production that have very strong scripts, not ideas for scripts are going to be rewritten the entire time, which is very frustrating for probably everybody involved. I think that's a good step. I think in some ways, the way they go about making these movies might end up being a better boon for DC than who is making them, uh, because that's a good approach to have, uh, to actually make movies and treat each of them like individual movies and go in with clear visions rather than kind of like having everything be constantly in flux for the sake of a greater good, like the way kind of Marvel does stuff. So I think it could be really good. I think that the actual writing team they put together sounds interesting. Uh, I'd love to see more faces and the names in there. But I want to say one thing is that I, I hope they get Grant Morrison involved. Uh, not just because Grant is like my favorite writer ever, but because James Gunn has come out multiple times and said how influential Morrison's work is on the direction they're taking. And they've got Tom King involved. And Tom King is, like, a big acolyte of Morrison's. Uh, and it feels weird to me if you don't involve Grant because uh, one of the things that sucks about the Marvel Universe is when it started, they, they heavily relied on guys like Brian Bendis and Matt Fraction, the guys who are working on the books at present to help them generate ideas, like, you know, for, for future movies. And then basically just kind of shut them out and then went on to adapt several of those guys' biggest stories without them, you know what I mean, um, and it's really shitty, and um, I, I just think it would be cool, DC has always been a little bit more creator-friendly than Marvel, like, not not by a lot, obviously, there's still a giant corporation that fucked over Siegel and Schuster, but I mean, like, modern creators, they get better royalties, things like that, so, like, it would be neat <laughs> if you're gonna come out and be like, oh, yeah, I'm making a movie about this writer's work, and they're still alive, and they're still actively trying to break into Hollywood better. Maybe we let them work on it. You know, I think that would be really a good thing they could do to differentiate them, I think, from Marvel, because you don't want to just go into this trying to recreate the MCU with different capes. You want to make your own thing, and that's a way you can make it stand out. And I also hope that as much as it's going to be writer-centric, I hope that the directors they bring into these projects are going to be given a little more free reign to put their own visual stamp on the projects and then it's not going to be aiming for one homogenous look the way marvel has i hope they actually allow for a little bit more visual diversity uh, and you can get away with having more visual diversity like that because you're actually putting work into making sure the movies are all story-wise of the same caliber you know what i mean like you don't it's like before every dc thing was its own thing and there was no real connection and it was nice that you had visually distinct projects, but like they didn't feel like they flowed together, you know? So for me, I'm still kind of on the fence as to whether or not this is all going to work out. Uh, up until today, actually, I kept thinking that James Gunn was going to just like lose this job before they ever put anything into production. And part of that comes from the fact that James is so online and he's so accessible and he feels like he has to personally debunk every bad rumor or things like that. And like, I don't want to see a guy running something this big doing that. Like, to start while, like, you know, earning the fans, whatever, cool, but, like, long-term, you know, Kevin Feige is not fucking, like, you can't tweet him, like, hey, when are we going to Midnight Sun show? Like, he's off doing his job. So I hope that as things really pick up, maybe James isn't doing that every day, is not just like, nope, actually, that's not true. So-and-so at SuperheroCape.com is incorrect. Like, dude, I don't care. Like, I, let's just ignore those people. Just do your job. Make, make good stories. Help, help facilitate good stories. So I'm really sort of like praying essentially that's like he stops doing that because it's just he's keep in mind dude the last time you got fired off a major superhero project was because of your tweets so you know you'd think you would be more hesitant to be this online but i don't know some people are just addicted i guess that said i love the dc universe personally i love dc comics other than the x-men and like to a lesser extent the fantastic four as much as i love marvel i'm not as like tied to their characters you know what i mean i love marvel stories overall there's a lot of marvel comics I, I dig but i grew up on batman i grew up on on dc i grew up on marvel too but i mean like the, largely just the x-men and i have no hope for good x-men movies coming out anytime soon as long as uh you know Feige's in charge so, but so the best i can hope for is that they're gonna make cool dc superhero movies 
uh, and movies that are a little bit more concerned with maybe pleasing all the fans than Snyder's were. And, um, you know, I, I, my love of Snyder is pretty well documented, so you don't have to think I'm one of those people who's glad he's gone or something. But I do think it's an opportunity to do something good and something special, and I, I hope it works. Or, in a year, they're going to announce somebody else fucking coming in to fix everything and reboot it. And in a way, that's actually more indicative of how the DC Universe functions anyway. Uh, they do have some kind of crisis every, like, 18 months. Uh, so, you know, if anything, they're just staying on brand. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts about the, the James Gunn announcement. Uh, thank you guys for watching. That was kind of last minute, but I just thought I'd share my thoughts about it. Uh, to, uh, once again, if you ever see me doing like a, a quick reactions video, it's I want to talk about this, but I don't want to talk about it on Twitter. So I'd like to talk about it to you guys and then not get sucked into arguing with some guy who has uh, like a profile picture of Batgirl or something. I just don't, I don't want that for my, for, I don't want, I don't want that for me and I don't want it for my life. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you're doing well, staying safe, being good to yourselves and each other. I will be back with a new video next week that I hopefully will get to finish this weekend and I'm very excited about it. So I hope you are too.